Hi, welcome to Tartar Talks. I'm your host, Joel Fatinos, and I'm also the publisher here. And I'm really excited about today's program because today we are going to be speaking to Laura Berman Fort Gang. Laura Berman Fort Gang is a self help author, three best selling self help books. She's also an interfaith minister, and she's a nationally known speaker. She's a pioneer in the area of life coaching. And today she's going to stop by and talk about meaning. I love it when Laura comes by because she's so great. She always has a lot to say, and I learn so much. So I want you to come with us. And we're going to go down to the Hudson River and talk to Laura. And uh, we're going to talk about her book, The Little Book of Meaning. So why don't you come with us? Hi, Laura. Hello. Thanks for joining us today. This is so fun. It is fun. I have known you now for about a dozen years, almost a dozen years. Wow. Is that That's true? That's how long we've been working together. Cool. Yeah, it is cool. So Laura, how can you measure meaning in your life? That's a good question. It doesn't fit in a cup. It's like two cups worth of meaning. But I, in, in being with that question, um, what came to me is that meaning, or knowing that something's meaningful is measured by a feeling. Um, that when you've had a meaningful conversation or you visit with a meaningful piece of jewelry, something that's connected to a memory of somebody who you love, um, you're filled up with a certain emotion and feeling. And I think it's a feeling of being alive, being aware, being fully present in a, in a moment. And when people say that they want to do something more meaningful or their life lacks meaning, um, I think they're missing a feeling. And I dare call it a version of happiness but maybe it's not that you know elated giddiness that most people think happiness is but meaning is feels soulful and full and so I've come to define the measurement as a feeling well in the book the little book on meaning you talk about the fact that the desire for more meaning can feel so big it can just feel so huge and yet the answer to getting more meaning is actually often small, bite-sized experiences. What do you mean by that? The search for meaning is that existential angst, and people really suffer over that. That's what I mean by being huge. And what I find ironic is that it's really the small things in life that make people feel like they have a meaningful life. It's a state of consciousness. It's a connection versus where we separate. So connection to each other, connection to the planet, connect, an interconnectedness versus all the things that we do to be separate or to have our ego take over and say we are better or we're more in control and that that actually moves people away from feeling meaning and um, that was that's the main exploration in the book is where do we disconnect and where do we need to connect to feel that feeling you divide the book on meaning into five sections five M word sections what are those five M words and give us a little bit about each of them sure the five M words just came pouring out as I was coming to writing the book and the first M is mystery that we need to have awe and reverence for the mystery of life because that discovery and that awe it brings meaning to our life minister stuff that I learned about becoming a minister and also how we minister to each other and it doesn't have to be from a religious perspective um, magnificence like when you really recognize the magnificence in things, that's when you feel connected to everything around you and the meaning feeling comes in. And mind, because our mind is probably the most powerful block to finding meaning. And finally, mystic, because um, I feel that the changes that our world is calling us forth with now, or the things that are being called forth now, is forcing each of us to trust ourselves more and more and our direct connection to the things we can't explain. In the little book on meaning, you talk about the fact that we have lost reverence for mystery or celebrating the unknown. What do you mean by that and how can we get it back? Well, if you think about the way we live, you know, we have our information right at our fingertips, you know, like getting emails and going on the news and um, being able to talk to people at any time. And we have Google, so if we need to know anything, we don't have to get up and go to the library, you know. So we are, we're so connected to being informed. And, that causes us to not explore. You know, we're used to instant answers. So exploration, if you think of nature, or you think of spending a moment 
really looking at sand or just getting lost in something that you don't understand with a reverence, um, that gives us that feeling of meaning. When everything is fast paced, we have all the answers. You have the literal translation of meaning. I know what this means. I've looked at the definition, but you may not have the feeling that it's meaningful. I would love for you to tell the story about Olive because I was very touched by that story in the book. I wish I had known Olive. Yeah, Olive was a miracle that landed in my life. I had the wisdom in my 20s when I was really depressed to like get out of myself and do something for somebody else. So I volunteered for an organization that delivered food to elderly people and shut-ins. And uh, here I am by myself on the Upper West Side of New York and I I'm supposed to go to this address and I get up to her the floor of the apartment and I knock on the door and I hear this you know just wretched voice just saying go away and I was like uh you know I'll knock again go away and I thought well I'm not gonna just leave this food here you know I've got to bring it in so I try the door and I go in and you could see in this tiny little studio there was something in the bed there was like a bump in the bed there was a person in there and I said you know I'm you know I'm gonna leave this for you and she's like well, don't get old, just get out of here. And I was really just, you know, a 25 year old nervous breakdown case. I mean, I didn't know what to do with this. So I was like ready to turn away and just leave. And I don't know what possessed me, but I, I asked her when was the last time she had her nails done, like had a manicure. And oddly, like she sat up in the bed and she started talking to me. And I asked her, you know, do you have any nail polish? Do you have an emery board? And she was like, yeah, over there. And we just sat down at the little table in the little room and I did her nails and you could see her go from like an ashen almost dead color to having pink in her face and started talking and opening up to me and telling me things and this led to bi-weekly visits to do Olive's nails and now Olive had never married had never had kids she had no one in her life right now at the very end of her life and I had decided ten years prior that I was never gonna have kids and I was never gonna get married and I was always gonna be independent and I kind of saw the outcome of what my life could be if I didn't include people in it. I was one of only four people at her funeral, including the clergy person. And I'll, I'll never forget her. And I, it really felt like some kind of cosmic um, happenstance that you know I was there to help her to the end of her life. And she was there to make sure that I began mine. So Laura. What would you like readers to take away from your book, The Little Book on Meaning? I'd like them to take away that feeling that, I, that I'm talking about that I think is meaning to feel that fullness and to recognize that they're already leading a meaningful life. I, mean, I, I don't think it's a given that nobody's leading a meaningful life, but I think there is that angst and I think that um, people question, you know, am I doing enough with my life or what am I supposed to do with my life? And um, I hope that the book serves people to get in touch with what meaning is and what it feels like and to bring more of it into their everyday. I don't think it takes an extraordinary circumstance to have a meaningful existence. So. Was it meaningful to write the book? It was. It really was. It was It was more fun than any of the books I've written so far. In what ways? Um, just to see it not be... First of all, I get to bring a lot more of myself to it and I'm not speaking as an expert. Um, so it gave me just free, a freedom that, you know, I, I feel like I've represented coaching for a lot of other coaches with my other books and, you, and this isn't per se about coaching. This is about meaning. And, uh, well, it's definitely the most personal of all of your books. It, it certainly is. And sometimes I question, like, why am I going to tell everybody this? Yeah. Why am I doing this? But it, I, since I suffered a major depression in my 20s and all the success that I've had post that time, I always feel like, okay, I wasn't supposed to die. You know, there was a reason that I kept going. And so I feel like I, I want to share that because I know there are other people who have been through things that think, you know, nothing can, good can happen for them or... You know, if they look at me and they think I'm so successful, oh, something like that can never happen to them. It's so not true. And so I've always been about telling on myself so that people realize, you know, if I can, you can. Right. So that's always where I've come from. I, I remember being a self-help junkie in my 20s and feeling like, oh, I'll never be like that. Or how do you do that? You don't explain it in the book. So I've always felt this need to be approachable, real, and tell my own stories because... 
people learn through story.